there are our dispatches for the Metropolitan News Service. Prompted heroic action by the rescue squad of the Metropolitan area prevented the subway accident from becoming one of the major tragedies of the year. A carload of office workers cramped by a short circuit. The suicide squad went into action, releasing men and women imprisoned to the smoke and fire. Averting a panic, traffic was tied up for about 30 minutes. Oh, Pop, I wanted to hear it. Well, then listen to somebody who knows something about it, instead of that mushmouth there. Ask it. I was up on the street where it was calm. Your father was down at the train where it was terrific. Was there many killed? If you don't quit pestering me, there'll be one more. <sighs> Did you want something, Dad? I just want me supper, that's all. Now, what are we waiting for? Barker? Now, Dad, you know Larry's coming to supper. Oh, uh, but then why isn't he here, then? Supper's not ready yet. And neither are you, Mickey. Come here. But, Ma... I washed them. Into the bathroom with you. Hello? Oh, yes, Larry. It's almost ready. Well, I'd be there by now, darling, only I got all tied up with Mr. Morgan at the Ritz. Okay, I'll grab a cab and be right over. All right, we'll be waiting for you. Bye. Well? Is he coming? Oh, yes. He said he just left Mr. Morgan at the Ritz, and he's going to get a cab and be right over. Mark, and a cab. <laughs> He'll be lucky if he's got a nickel for the subway. Ah. <laughs> the homespun hour will be on the ether tomorrow night at 7.30. Here, here, turn off that radio. Pop, how does ether put people asleep? By bringing in the radio speeches. Can I tune in on Burton Holmes? He helps me in my geography. No, no, no. You'd better wait a while until the world gets more settled. Y you might get confused. Get on out of here and do as your mother told you to. Get out of there. Go on, would you? Well, if it isn't old town Paul Parker himself, nice weather we're expecting. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Yeah, and so much of it. Has old man O'Connor got you on his suicide squad yet? He's working on it. I'm going over there now for Chow. Say, tell me something. Is it his job or his daughter you're really after? Ah, oh, go on. Make your rounds. Nothing stirring. I've made my rounds today. Rounds of cocktails or was it highball? Oh, no. I'm getting pretty regular about drinking. It's not the regular drinking that's going to get you, Snaps. It's that drinking between drinks. How many, Snaps? Two gallons. Don't forget to clean my windshield. Hey, Snaps, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm in a newspaper business. Ah, you're too old to sell newspapers. No, I'm a photographer. See you later. I don't want to keep my future boss waiting. Well, give him my regards. Taxi cab. Oh, ho, there's one for the books. Here's a cab stopping now. I'll bet it's Larry. Wait for me, driver. It is Larry. Here, here, now you stay right here. Hi, Larry. Will you shut that window? Hi, Larry. How's the mix? Hello, Larry. Hello, Hi. Mary. Howdy, folks. Oh, too bad, Captain. Traffic tied up 30 minutes on one short circuit. You must be slipping. Now, what you need... Is you, for instance. Sure, I could have cleaned up that job single-handed in 10 minutes. You know, I'd like to have you on my squad for just about 24 hours. Well, you've got my application. Just put it through. No kidding, I'd put real life in those smoke monkeys of yours. Listen, what you need is a little more life in your alarm clock. And you don't like too much heat on the dinner, either. Sorry, Mary, only old man Morgan just wouldn't let me get away from him. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> hey, Ed, what you so noisy about? Well, I haven't had much chance. Well, go ahead. You've got the floor. Be funny. Say, I'm hungry. Mother, Harry wants to get on the squad. Now, I know you can get Dad to give him a chance if anyone can. I told him you'd help. So he's lost another job, has he? No, not yet. Well, you can tell him this for me. 
that if I recommend him, he better not throw me down. Oh, he won't, Mother. I know he won't. Come on, don't be worrying. Well, Mother, how's the old Larry Cleo, huh? <laughs> Larry Barker, if you must my dress, I'd box your ears. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> Well, now that Mr. Morgan's friend is here, what are we waiting for? Uh, this is ready. Come on to the table. Follow me. Uh, Begar, you're sitting in Sonny's place. You and Larry belong on the other side. And be sure to leave that band over there. By the way, what were you and old man Morgan going over this afternoon that took you so long? Oh, traffic and public relations, mostly. I suppose we'll be seeing you in the stock exchange before long. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I've already got a good start on the curb. I bet those gentlemen give you some fine tips, huh, Larry? No, they're tighter than... I mean, they're very particular in who they confide in. I suppose so. That's the way with those big bugs. Bugs? Yeah. <clears throat> taxi! Taxi! I want a taxi! Boy, can that be your cab that is tooting for you? Yeah, maybe your driver's getting a bit impatient. Yeah, maybe. You don't mean to say you had that cab wait for you. That's just what I did. I better go down and see him. You'll never have a dime as long as you live squandering your money that way, Larry Barker. Taxi, mister? Larry's talking to the driver, Ma. Mickey, will you come away from that window there? And eat your supper. Oh, gee, Dad, I thought he might sock the guy. Oh, taxi? look, this taxi's taken. Now, you quit playing and you go on home, will you? But I want a taxi. Look, go around the corner and up half a block, will you? Thanks. Thanks. Mind your father. And the word is hit. Not stop. And don't call a taxi driver a guy. I know it, Ma. I was just being polite. Who's been fooling with my carbon knife? Well, you see. Larry was showing me how to make a boat, and, and uh, he said I had to have a sharp knife, so... I'm dead. <clears throat> you know, Larry's arguments are sound. They're very sound. In fact, they're nothing but sound. That's all right, Dad. I'll be a big shot yet. Well, you are, too. You've been fired off and up. Hey, why don't you slice the legs off first? Out. You're getting duck all over your clothes. Oh, Dad can wear anything. You know, he always looks good in ducks. Oh, isn't that duck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mom. Mom, why don't you put zippers on him? <laughs> Am I supposed to laugh at that one? <laughs> well, that's what you get for marrying a self-made man. I did. But I guess I'll have to make a few alterations. Well, if you've got such a swell job, why all the talk about getting on the force? Well, you got so many old ladies on it, I thought you might use a guy like me. For what? Well, for that subway wreck, for instance. You know what I'd have done? What? I'd have gone through one of those manholes over on 42nd Street and then blast through the subway wall instead of trying to dig it out through the terminal basement. Had to save a lot of time. Ah, a lot you know about rescue work.
Isn't that the number of Larry Parker's cab? Sure. He's supposed to be on duty downtown. Hmm, maybe he's on a call. You drop something out. <laughs> Just a little joke of Ed. I got the point all right. Excuse me, folks. I got to see what's eating that driver. Mary, you can go. We wash the dishes. Thinking of that cab meat has got me all of a jitter. All right, Mom. Well, 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 what's the idea? You tell me. You're supposed to be on duty downtown. You've been in there for over an hour. We've had you spotted. Well, what about it? Nothing except that you're fired. Okay, buddy, give me what I got coming and I quit. Step right in, Mary. The Vogue Theater driver and go the short way. You know, Ed, Larry sure has a way with him. Yes, we don't weigh heavy enough, except for the women folks. So, uh, you know, I think you could take a page out of his book. Come up oftener. Look at him. He's here four or five days a week. He makes himself one of the family. Well, maybe you're right at that. Hey, Mickey, how about a movie tonight? Oh, I gotta go to bed. Well, Tim, I guess I'll be going myself. All right. Good night, Ed. Oh, good night. You know, Ed's a good steady boy. Larry's a good boy, too. He just hasn't found the right job yet. He's looked over plenty. Just remember, you looked over quite a few yourself before you found the one that suited you. If it's asking to get him on the squad you're aiming at, nothing to it. Tim O'Connor. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Well, it's again me better judgment. He's nothing but a smart Alex scatterbrain. And besides, Ed Drew is a better man for our Mary. But our Mary happens to be in love with Larry. Why do you think I married you? I've often wondered. I've had a hard day. Oh? What will I tell the children? Ah, well, you can tell them that I'll go down to the chief with them in the morning. Mark my words. Taking orders and teamwork ain't in him. Maybe it's the training is what he needs most. Well, now that you've had your way, sleep is what I need the most. Now, you're all new to the force, but before you can become part of it, you're going through a rigid training. But just remember this. This department gives no medals and no rewards to its members. There's no individual glory. It's discipline and teamwork that counts.
gentlemen, raise your right hands and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the state, of the state, of the state and the laws and ordinances of this city. And the laws and ordinances of this city. And obey all rules and regulations. And obey, and obey all rules and regulations. And orders of the fire department. And orders of the fire department. And faithfully discharge the duties of a fireman. And faithfully discharge the duties of a fireman. And faithfully serve the city. And faithfully serve the city. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Gentlemen, for a monthly paycheck, you are going to be expected to obey orders implicitly and take chances that no other employment demands. Yours will be largely the glory of service to our city and to our citizens. Patrol officer, uh, what's your hour in here? About 28 hours a day if he feels like keeping me here. Well, you ought to be saving money. Hey, Snaps, you better beat it. I got a lot of work to do. Okay. You know the chief ordered your newspaper men to stay outside the railing. He ordered me off. He said I was trying to steal a cigar. Were you? Trying? Well, I already had him. Say, when a man wants his picture on the front page of a newspaper, he should mind losing a few cigars. The chief isn't that type. No, well, I got a box of cigars in the mail, and my girl isn't sending them. Patrol office. Yes, sir. Beach station. Yes, sir. Six to twelve. I have a man available. Larry Barker? Okay, okay, I'm coming. What do you want polish now? Well, oh, there's short a man at the beach station tonight. And you'll have to work an extra shift. Report there at 6 and you'll be due at 12. What, tonight? Yes, that's all. Oh, no, it's not. What else? You know I got a date to take Mary to dance tonight. It isn't the first time you pull this trick. I was asked for a man for the beach station. Yeah, but you didn't have to pick me. That was your own idea. Orders are orders. You have yours. And you're just about to get yours. No, I'm not afraid of you. But I'm on duty. And so are you. If you want to start a fight, go ahead. I get you. If I start a fight, I'll get kicked off the squad for punching my superior in the nose. Is that it? Probably. Okay, you win. But you won't next time. Leave it to me. I'll pick the spot. Well, you ought to do bigger things. Yeah, like polishing bigger fire engines? Or getting yourself along. Say, do you want to shoot something worthwhile with that brownie of yours? Sure. Do you know whether the major disaster is about to happen? I know about them as soon as they do happen. Well, let me in on them. Okay. I'll tip you the news. You feature me in the pictures. That's a deal. With me to publicize you, you'll go to the top. Mary, telephone. Okay. Excuse me. I think it's the girlfriend. Hello? Say, Mary, they put me on extra duty tonight, so I guess our little date is off. Yes, I know. It's a shame. You know? Well, who told you? I didn't know Tim had gone home yet. Well, Wyatt called up and said as long as you had to work, he wanted if I'd go to the dance with him. Oh, he did, did he? Are you going? Yeah, sure. I heard all about that new dress. Okay, go ahead. Who, me? No, I'm not sore, no. Okay, I'll be seeing you. You're a dirty double crossing. Samson Mortgage Company building has been bombed. <laughs>
driving. What to do? Where's the baby this time? I was just watching those babies. What's wrong with them? That's what I'd like to know. One of them just came out of that bank. Hey, look! I say just walk that thing. Come on. Say, hey, where's that fool gone with those trucks? Search me, but he's in a hurry. Well, head him off and bring him back here. Fast work, buddy. I saw him back on that bank. Yes, the captain wants that squad truck back quick. Okay, I guess you can handle things all right now. I wouldn't be surprised. Did you get one of me catching the crooks? I sure did. Come on. Here comes the truck now. I'll be talking to that young man. Where'd you go with that truck? Well, listen, I saw a couple of fellows. Oh, there's no time to listen to you. You were ordered to stay with that truck. Now get them rescue bags out. But get that equipment. And if there's any lives lost because you disobeyed orders, you'll explain and you'll explain plenty. You endangered the lives of your comrades just to get your mug on the front page of the paper. What if that equipment had been needed? What if we'd run into gas? Well, I, I saw them robbing that bank. Yeah, and you went chasing after them with a newspaper cameraman with armed cops all around you. What did you think? They were going to stop and pose for a picture, would you? I guess I didn't stop to think. I doubt if you can think. Look at that paper. Yeah, and you expected us to slap you on the back. The chief is on the way in. On your toes. Glad to see you, Captain. How are you, boys? Where's Larry Barker? Larry Barker? Step forward. My boy, I remember that name, and I want to compliment you for your fast thinking and aiding with the capture of those bank bandits. The department awards you a strike, effective immediately, for your service and brain performance of your duty. Thank you, sir. Not a bit. And I want to congratulate you, Captain O'Connor, for having such a wide awake squad. Now, Snaps is outside and wants to take a picture with me shaking hands with you, Barker, if you'll just step out into the light. Get back to your work. And I'll break the head of the first one here that makes a wise crack. Shake hand. Okay. Hold it. Okay. Chief. 
Would you like to inspect the patrol? Not today, Captain. Some other day. Well, thanks for coming around anyhow. That's all right. Well, how's that for fixing your pal? Oh, swell, Huntley. Oh, forget it. I gotta go. Well, I'll be seeing you. Say, Cap, I had nothing to do with... Well, do it some more. Mary. What is it? Why don't we duck the fireside tonight and go out to dinner? Just the two of us. Larry, there's something wrong between you and Dad, isn't there? Not on my side. Your dad doesn't like me much, but I think he's swell. Oh, you're wrong, Larry. Dad really likes you. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see his side of it, but I don't want to spend 20 years trying to be a captain. But Dad put in years of faithful service to get his experience. Sure, but you don't have to do that. Look, now, I've only been with the outfit a month, and I've already got one stripe on my sleeve. Yes, I know, but you weren't entitled to it. Oh, I wasn't, huh? Why wasn't I? Listen, no stripes mean something. They mean faithful performance, and you hardly know anything about that. Those stripes have to be earned. Nah. I suppose Rockefeller and Morgan earned every dime they got. Oh, look, life's too short to do it that way. Well, maybe so, but if their names had happened to have been old Rockefeller or Matt Morgan, they'd make sacrifice hits now and then. You can't try for a home run every time. It's the dependable hitters that win games. Oh, well, it's Babe and Dick Daffy that draw down all the heavy dough. Oh, well, I suppose I'll never make you see the point. Oh, sure you will, Mary. It's okay for your dad, but I'm going places. I think you will, too, but not so fast. Hello. Right. Ammonia explosion, District 4. Turn out. Uh-uh, you should never have made that move. Boys, ammonia explosion. All out. Be a port and play out that lifeline. Yes.
Larry does hit the ball and has his ability. Doing a thing like that's liable to cost one of us our life. Sure. You know, he reminds me of my grandmother's cow. She was the best looking cow and she'd give more milk than any other cow in the county Clare. And then she'd kick the pail over. <laughs> Go fetch him. almost cost the life of one of our best men. Now, what have you to say for yourself? I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry? You almost kill a man and all that you've got to say is that you're sorry? Now, there's no place in this department for grandstanders. It's teamwork that counts. No one man can carry the ball all the time. I take it you want my resignation. I don't want your resignation, but I'm going to take that stripe off your sleeve. And I expect you to obey orders. That's all. Yes, sir. Oh, Mickey. Hey, what's the matter? You been fighting again? It's the rules? Oh, I don't care. Who was it this time? Mike Doolan. Mike Do He's too big for you. What were you fighting about? Oh, come on. Tell me. Get it off your chest. Make you feel better. He, he called you names. Oh, yeah? Well, well, what did he say? He said his pop said all the men called you a grandstand four-flusher. Oh, well, you oughtn't to fight about a thing like that. Couldn't let him get away with calling you those names. Say, Mick, just between you and me, I don't think you'll ever hear anybody call me that again. Well, I know it's a, a dirty lie. Okay, pal. Why didn't you remind me it was Mary's birthday? Sure, a fine one you ought to be forgetting it. Mom, here's the candle. Take care of them. Mary! It's Connor's at the door. Yeah, I hear it knocking. The green grove is gone from the hills, Maggie. I entertain them boys socially. How do you expect me to have any control over them? Jim O'Connor, it won't hurt you to be a little sociable for one night. 
Now, officer, and get something on in place of that uniform. Happy birthday, Mary. Thanks. You're a bit late, Mary. Mary, wait a minute. I want to tell you something. I guess you think I made an awful mess of things, don't you? What do you think? Well, I think you've been right. I'm glad I lost that stripe off my sleeve, but I'll get it back and I'll earn it this time. Oh, Larry, that's the nicest birthday present I've had yet. Hello, boys. Hello. 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 Hello, gang. Hello, Mary. Well, you and I in an ice cream freezer have some unfinished business. All right. I'll be right back. That guy's got a lot of nerve coming here tonight. You said it. Got a match, Frank? Thanks. Nice party, isn't it? Yes, it was. Looks like you've taken in a welcome mat. Uh, folks, there's a request in the kitchen for Larry to sing. Oh, no, have a heart. Oh, nothing doing. Say, Vince, how about squeezing the jig out of that thing? <laughs> Munitions District. Oh, go 
inside and light it. I'll take some throw pictures of you tonight. Nothing doing. I'm through with posing. Okay. You what? Hey, Sam, come here. What's the matter? They're trapped in there with nothing to lead them out. Here, hold that reel and stick by it this time. Their lives. Yes, just luck I didn't kill all of them. How? By not standing by this line as I was ordered. But how about Ed? They won't blame you. Maybe not, but that reel was my job. Well, you couldn't let Ed rope, could you? Well, I couldn't stop to think about it anyway. Well, maybe Ed'll square it. Well, you did the right thing. It's too close to home to remember rules. Barker? By disobeying orders, you caused serious injury to three of the squad, which might not have happened had you stuck to your post. What have you to say for yourself? Nothing. In the short time you've been in the service, your record has been extraordinary and spectacular. But you must realize you cannot jeopardize your comrades just to make newspaper copy. I wasn't after the publicity. I went after... Where you went and what for does not interest this department. This isn't the first time that you have left your post to follow some idea of your own. Because of your ability, and where there was no one hurt, we more or less overlooked the offense. There can't be two generals on a battlefield. You took things into your own hands. Consequently, I suspend you for six months without pay. Would you like my resignation? Perhaps that would be best. All right, you've got it. What happened? I quit. Well, what's the idea? Let me tell her. No, I'll wait a minute. That won't do any good. Anyway, I don't want anybody squaring anything I can't handle myself. Well, where was Ed? You know, Ed's in the hospital. Well, he could have come clean with the old man if Tim could have gone to bat for you. Well, they do say Tim tried to get me another chance. 
Besides, they're probably right. Fight your grandmother. You should have let that guy fry up on that roof. Well, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Go back to driving a hack, I guess. Mary, darling, what's the matter? Oh, it's Larry again. Been playing up to the newspapers. Told me he was through with that sort of thing. I just saw Ed. He's in the hospital. He was hurt on the job while Larry was posing for the cameraman. Did Ed tell you that? No, Ed didn't tell me. He's too much of a gentleman. Dad told me. Your father talks too much. What has Larry told you? It isn't what he told me. It's what I'm going to tell him. Hello. Oh, good morning, Mary. What's good about it besides your picture in the paper? Well, I was going to tell you about that. Never mind. I know all about it. Oh, you do? Well, go on. Well, the last time was bad enough. You learned your lesson. Well, you've a lot to learn, and you never will. You're just a show-off. What hurt me the most was that you lied to me. Well, listen, Mary. Listen, you, you ask Ed what happened. Oh, you did? Whoa. So anything I say won't make any difference, huh? No, it won't, Larry. You lied to me. You're just a four flush and a show off. There's only one more thing I want to say to you, and that's goodbye. There's an explosion and fire on an excursion boat. Pier 12. We'll be there. Both of us going, besides, I know where they are. Hey, toss it to me oh. after I get over, will you?
coming through the hall. All right, we'll get another torch and we'll cut through from the other side and help them out. Come on, get over. Got rather a wet welcome back to the force. I'll see that you get properly mentioned in my report. I'm not on the force. I don't want my name mentioned in any report, understand? Hey, my God. Hey, no crazy to get warm at this end. You watch your old man and then follow his example. Larry, it's a little late to be telling you, but it was me that Larry went to rescue when he was thrown off the fort. Parker, would you mind letting me have a look at that hat? Marry me by... You know, your head was made to wear a hat like that. Thank you. And I'll be taking orders from now on. And Mary is just the gal that can give them. You and the hat is very becoming, Larry. We're going to have a swell time tonight, Mary. I've got three tickets to a show. Who can three? Well, one for your mother, one for your father, and one for Mickey. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 